Yo. So today's a day. We're gonna start working on leveling up some of our decks instead of just introducing new ones. But I wanna do both. Like I wanna do five more games with a deck that qualified and see if we can get it to level two, which is the 10 win record. And then I want to then go back and introduce new decks too. I wanna do it all. I want to do all of these things. So I have a notebook. I just have them scribbled down in no particular order. Well, actually there's kind of an order to it. Like it starts out with some of the more recent qualifications when I first came back. Then it has all the old qualifications because I copied them out of Twitch. And then it has the new qualifications again. So we're gonna go kind of new, old, new. And yeah, that's the way it's gonna roll. The first thing in that notebook, for better, for worse, just the way the things broke is a red green ramp. And I'm just looking over, is there anything that needs to be changed? I don't really think so. I I said before I really like this deck, and I wanna see I do wanna see it do well, so I'm crossing my fingers that it makes a run here. But, you know, can't get too attached to a deck. It will turn around and let you down if you get emotionally involved. It'll just heart break that heart, so. Alright, that's where we're gonna pick it up first. I think I'll just, if I duplicate it, that'll push it to the front, as we used to do back in the day. And that's how I'll know we're on level two. All right. And away we go. Okay, let me open chat up now that I've made sure the list is right. Is that advice exclusive to decks? And I think you mean my advice about not getting emotionally attached. <laughs> I think we can all, I think we all know that somewhere in the world, somewhere in the world, uh, that is good advice for other things. We all know that, it's common sense. But we also know that not getting emotionally attached to anything is not living your life. I like. So, I, I'd had Collective Defiance, but I cut it in favor of stepping up Fiery Impulse. It just wasn't as fast as I felt it needed to be. I wanted to be doing things on my turn, like playing Cathartic Reunion and Grapple with the Past, and those took up mana instead of spending my whole turn Collective Defying. So, that's the reason for that. Uh, one of Green Expertise. That might be fun, but no. I, this, I don't think, is a Green Expertise deck, but I have... There are decks where that card is just a lot better. It's it's a fun card, don't get me wrong, but this this deck is a little more, like, it's kind of grindy. I, I feel like Green Expertise is a big combo card. Just go off. Um, No veggies. Yeah, no explosive vegetation is one of the interesting things about this deck. It's It doesn't have, like, Druid of the Cowl or Two Man Accelerators to play veggies early. So we really want, we lean on Nissa's Pilgrimage, we lean on the Drownyard Temple, and then we, when we get up to six mana, we lean on these creatures. So it's not the fastest ramp deck, but I don't think it needs to be the fastest ramp deck. So turn one Jotty. I think that means that Ballista's unnecessary. I'll just grapple, but I'll wait to do it. Rishkar's expertise goes into what deck exactly? Um, have you ever watched the video that Nighthawk made? It's a mono green ramp deck, and it runs Druid of the Cowl and Explosive Vegetation, right? So it gets up the curve a lot faster. And then it has Primal Bellow and almost all forests in the mana base. So it can just pump something to the moon. I think I'll wait to get value off this tracker. And I'll wait till I play this Ballista for more. So I'm just gonna do nothing. I'm Everything's fine here, but I, if I play a creature here, it's probably playing into a Harness Lightning or a Shock. So, uh, the Nighthawk deck tries to go, like, seven mana as fast as possible. Then you play, like, um, Gaia's Revenge or uh, Primal Hunt Beast or Aether Basker. Then the next turn you cast Primal Bellow on that already monstrous thing. You cast Rishkar's Expertise and draw, like, 
like 15 cards, and you cast Monstrous Onslaught and wipe the opponent's entire field, and then you win. So that's what I mean, uh, where that is obviously a very pure home for that card. It just is pure a home as it can have, and I don't... I think I'd be doing an injustice by slamming it elsewhere. Besides, if I put in the Rishkar's expertise, I would probably take out the Chandra's Ignition. And I think this deck needs Chandra's Ignition more, because it's not nearly as explosive as that other deck. Having a deck full of creatures that are not hexproof, but having a deck full of uh, big creatures and sorceries that rely on those big creatures being alive, that's not a good recipe. Anyway, in this game, our opponent is taking their time, ramping a little, gaining some life. So we've got a pseudo mirror. It should be said that this deck is five and one, which means a ramp and it, like a ramp, a loss and it is done. So this deck is living on the edge. And I do think we should probably start bringing glory, even because it's unlikely that Glorybringer will kill something big. Now, I would consider just playing it and attacking and not exerting, but I think the odds of it living are pretty low. I think it'll get Collective Defiance or something will happen to this in a minute. Not to mention, there won't be many small creatures for Glorybringer to kill. So I think we do want to exert it here, as gaining two or more life a turn is going to be very difficult. It's just, it's just gonna take away the value of having a 4-4 flyer more more like a 2-2 two, two flyer, so I may as well get some of these dead. What about Fling? Do you have it? What are your thoughts on it in a deck like this? Uh, I think uh, I do not have it. I am not a Fling fan at all. I, I am not a fan of Fling in any decks. I think that there are some neat combo kills you get with it, but I think those are kind of really I think those are the exception of the rule I think most of the time fling sits in your hand and it, it, you either two for one yourself and lose the game and you don't get your combo or it just does nothing I think fling is a trap card I think it's a classic trap card now don't get me wrong if you want to go get trapped because you love you some fling I am not going to hate you for it it is a very fun card I fully admit it but in terms of trying to win as many games as possible I think it is a trap card. I am absolutely confident it is a trap card. Now here's a combo. Oblivion Sower and Tireless Tracker. These are not trap cards. They come with awesome bodies that are fine with or without each other. Or without the combo elements. That's just straight synergy. Now if we had an Ulamog and we exiled half their deck and we had a Tireless Tracker and then we play an Oblivion Sower, that'd be combo-tastic. Right? Jotty Offshoots, having a think about this Looming Spire's development and all these clues that came with it. Our opponent's red-green deck, and this is a reason I don't run Jotty Offshoot in every red-green red -green deck, is because if you draw two Jotty Offshoots and a ramp spell, but no payoff, all you've done is gain some life and sit there. And that's where our opponent's at right now. Now let's see if they can turn that around starting now. Okay, they're going to play a Nyssa. They're gonna get to flip their Nissa, but whether the Nissa ticks up or makes a 4-4, if they don't kill Glorybringer, it's not going to matter. Glorybringer can take out the Nissa or take out the token. This is the, yeah, uh, what I'm gonna call it, instead of the second round, Edmund, I'm gonna call it a uh, level two. We're gonna try to get deck this uh, red-green deck to level two, which right now it is, has a five and one record, and we're going to try to get it to a 10 in one record to stay in competition. So uh, if it loses even a single game for any reason, it is out of competition. And this is the same way we did it last time. So nothing too new. Now we have two types, but I'm guessing a walking ballista would fix that. We have instant and land. So if walking ballista goes to the graveyard, Ishkana can have delirium, which is pretty great. At the same time, it's nice to just have a big walking ballista, so I'll probably use this like a 
Rolling Thunder this turn, and then play an Ishkana after I fire off its counters. I could also play it for two, and just fling it and then play Ishkana, and that would use all my mana. But a big ballista is a threat all of its own, so I'm not gonna be too depressed about it. Um, let's see, Glorybringer can kill the Jadi and hit the Nissa. Maybe I'm not supposed to deploy more stuff on the battlefield. How about, can I kill my opponent? Um, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Not 17. Hmm. Very close, but no cigar. All right, but the the next attack would be very dead anyway, or a walking ballista. So, because they might have Ulamog, let's kill the Nissa just to be sure that that's fixed. Ryan here, it's lagging on me a little, but I'll figure it out. Somebody, <laughs> Zarvalt would like me to know that if I had fling, I would have lethal now. Now, that's that's the definition of win more, right? Because we could do things that way, but we don't need to to win unless my opponent turns the game around somehow and we lose out of nowhere. The question always about a card isn't, can I win right now? It's, would I have won anyway? if this were something else that was more useful in another context. Shoot to Kazandu. All right, we're gonna gain some life. Okay, there's veggies. I wonder what our opponent was holding these cards for. Seems like they played the game out very strangely since at least some of those cards weren't drawn this turn. They were in their hand. It's just bizarre. Maybe the veggies he was waiting to have a payoff like a retreat to Kazandu. All right, so fog. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, fog, I guess. Let's go find out. I'll just attack him for the 12 here because if he takes the damage, then he doesn't have fog and now Ballista can kill. And so now I'll we'll gift the gold. Gold for you. But we add to the win total for red green ramp. Six and one. The unlikely hero was the hero we deserved, but not the hero we needed. The hero we needed talks like this to disguise his voice. Yitz would like to point out that that is a horrible Batman impression. Thank you. I worked on it absolutely zero. For not a second of my life did I actually try. Therefore, I am not surprised. All right. I have a battle here. Need green mana. Can I draw green mana off this hand? I don't want to lose the game that way, so we're going to at least try a mulligan. Man, now we have the all red hand. Imagine if we had the three mountains in this hand. Would we keep that? Hmm, tough. Drownyard Temple. No cathartic reunion for it, though. Our opponent's opening on a swamp. Let's see what happens. This is not a spectacular hand. I don't know where it's going to go. This, is, this game might get interesting. Blue Black. Opter. Not something I have a good answer to at all in my hand. Where are my fiery impulses at, yo? Grapple. Good old Copter Copter. All right. 
do it. Oh, you're always in a bind when the opponent has Smuggler's Copter on uh, turn two. And you don't have a smooth answer. But let's see. Here comes an Enthusiast. So it's going to be one of those kind of games. Alright. Little pump fake. Yeah, no fear. Bravo. So do we grapple is a big question mark. Because I think what I want to do is play this Ballista and use Galvanic Bombardment combined with Ballista. But I might also flip a grapple or a Galvanic Bombardment into my graveyard. So I'll try it with the grapple. <laughs> yeah, that's a long way from happening. So that has to stay there. And... Ah! Impulse, wrong one, son of a... Mm. Okay, tilt, it's gonna be one of those games. It's gonna be one of those games. No, the, the quest for the best is to find the best uh, deck with a record of um, X and 1. Okay, so as soon as... Oh, okay, maybe the he has to have a way to crew the, crop, the copter here. Maybe he doesn't. I mean, that would be fine. But yeah, the, the mission is to find a the best X and 1 deck. Therefore, as soon as something gets a second loss, it's done. Over. Kaput. Otherwise, the, the game might go on for an eternity. The right play. Probably a Chandra's Ignition, but I can wait to make that decision. Let's see what my opponent wants to do. They just reverse engineered, so I suspect they may have a removal spell now for Ballista. If they use it before activating Copter, there's nothing I can do. Here it comes. I guess we'll let the loot happen. It's marginal. Compared to holding back the damage. So would I rather Chandra's Ignite my opponent? I guess it depends on what they play. Well, I can take the hit and decide on end step. Okay, that's what I'll do. I'll decide on end step, see what they play. They play more tokens. We might just ignite. In the tank. Tezzeret. Okay. Yeah, I guess Ignition's probably prudent. Pause me for nothing. Right on. There's an impulse. Now, what does that mean? I guess it means... I want to attack Tezzy? I think we have the mastery down. Yep, easy peasy. See what my opponent does if I attack his Tezzeret. Yep, that's fine. Hmm. I think I'll try to add a counter to him on end step. That sounds good. And we'll do this before my opponent untaps and has all the mana available. Now, 
I could make it hard for him to crew the copter by taking out his tokens. That would make him at least play more tokens. But I'm pretty sure he he doesn't need a lot of encouragement to do that. Will you throw in some new decks in next time or will you just play level two? I'm gonna do I'm gonna try doing an an old deck, leveling up an old deck and um, introducing a new deck. Also, I'm not gonna respond to chat as much while this game gets intense. Muggler's Copter. Yep. Bolt your Copter. We got Counter Spells. Metallic Rebuke. Sure. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. I hope the opponent doesn't plan to kill my ballista now, because I would then take out their copter. I wonder if it's another reverse engineer. Oh, there it was. So, uh, I think a misplay. But, who's to say? Uh-huh, that guy. Sure. All the Chandra all the time. We have the torch, we have the ignition. So I play this, he plays Metallic Rebuke. Hopefully that opens up this for next turn, but he's got this very annoying critter. We're at 11. All right. Yeah, I know. Tap. Yep. Cool. So that gets that thing off the board, which was a, becoming a serious concern. All right. Here we go. Hey, um, so Yit says I think the whole quest for the best is a sham because the clear winner five color mono green fog super friends isn't in it. Well, dude, I haven't introduced all the decks yet, so you can't say that. Not everything is determined. Like I said, some new decks will be joining. Uh, hi, uh, if anybody wants to answer this question uh, from the new player about free to play, go ahead. I'm not going to answer it. It's I I'm in intense battle right now. Please don't take any offense. Okay, I think my opponent is still sitting on some kind of annoying counter magic, so am I supposed to try to Chandra them, or am I supposed to Oso oh them? I guess I can try to Oso, oh and then if I flip a whole bunch of lands, maybe I can Ignite. No, because he doesn't have red mana. But I might get enough mana to resolve Chandra through a Metallic Rebuke. Torrential Gear Hulk, what a beating. So it looks like we're at the end of our line, unless something absolutely bizarre happens. 
What a beating. Um, we should be dead, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. That's game if he knows how to use Tezzeret. But I don't think that... Okay, come on. Don't don't taunt me. All you had to do was tick down Tezzeret. But okay. Showing me the Tezzeret's touch. Tezzeret giving me the bad touch. All right, that's it. So six and two. I would have liked red green ramp to do better. I honestly don't think ramp is well positioned. I think either the control decks countering your good threats or the aggro decks like in the vehicles getting under and around you. Like we took, I think 11 damage from that smuggler's copter. Just didn't have an answer to it right away. And we had removal spells. They just weren't the kind that kill copter. So I'm not very surprised, just to be honest. I'm really not. Ramp, you're a, you're a fun deck, but I don't think you're meant to be a great deck. So, deck deletion ceremony. Dun, dun, da, dun, dun, da, 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 Boo. Zarvolt wants to ask me... Uh, Smuggler Copter did 9 damage. I, I mean it dropped me to 11. My bad. I said it wrong, yet. Um, what else we got here? Out of the quest for the best decks, what is your favorite to play? Which do you think has the best chance to win? I don't know. That's why I experiment. Uh, but I will talk about them as they come up. Um, my favorite to play is probably Team Urge, something like that. And what I actually expect to win is... Um, it's hard not to pick like a red white vehicle or something of that nature but you never know things get things things happen yep that was cathartic ramp it's dead now say goodbye cry your tears because there will be another one x x x and i don't mean hugs and kisses all right that's just me kicking it out of the notebook. Um, so that was only two games. I do want to introduce a new deck, but I think we should try to level up another deck first. So the next one on my list is the Monument deck. Is that still in here? Yeah, I think that's you. It was the first take on Monument. And is this the one? I think it is. Yeah, looks looks like the one. I'm just trying to think if there's any changes I want to make. And there are certain I do believe there are. I'm just trying to decide. How best to handle that. I think Toolcraft is too mopey. I'm not convinced that Ballista's right in this deck, although I've done some pretty nutty things with it. But I think Toolcraft in particular can hit the brick, can hit the bench. There just aren't enough artifacts. It's a 1-1. One, one. It doesn't even get the discount. I would also don't want two declarations in stone. I think one is just fine. I've soured on that card quite a bit. So that leaves me the spots. And then what I wanted to do is play an Archangel Avacyn. No, I wanted to play the Gisela combo. That's what it was. I just want to have the Gisela combo up my sleeve. Because we got Monument to reduce the cost. The games can go long. Yeah, that that's what I was playing with. That's right. That's what we were doing. We're just gonna... Because I think this is the best Gisela deck, and I qualified a version called Angel Ramp as well. And, and I really just think I can combine those into one deck. Because the only good thing about that deck was going into Gisela. <laughs> so, yeah. I think this is... I think this is the deck. 
All right, any last second thoughts before this thing goes out to battle? Thalion here. It's probably better than Kithian, and it might be better than at least one of the Ballista. Thalia is really good against Glorybringer and tokens right now, which is why I like it. We do have 12 three drops. That is high, but this is this deck's like Collective Company where you, you want to use your cost reductions. So that might be a good idea. However, this, like, I think maybe one. I think one is appropriate. And either a Kithian or a Ballista. And I think Kithian's the one to go. This is not a beatdown deck. Does that seem appropriate? Let's see. Anything else I would mess with this before we go to battle? Still like Copter because it's Copter. Hard card to take out. Harvester, Monument, so there's kind of a vehicle thing going with a value thing, going with a big late game that other vehicle decks don't have because of the Monument, so I dig that. The only, the the one of I was playing a lot when I was playing this deck was Trophy Mage to make sure I, to, to be my fourth Monument. I, I don't doubt my ability to fi to flip Kithion. I doubt my ability for it to do anything before I flip it. And then at the time when I do flip it, is that win more? I think so. I mean, I think Kithion's best when you're like flipping it turn three and just running the opponent over. This deck isn't meant for that. It just that's not how it that's not how it rolls. I also feel like the maybe the Glorybound Initiate should still be in here. It's a good card. It dies to Dusk to Dawn is my reasoning, but now so do the Angels. So I think that that's more likely to keep me alive than Walking Ballista is. And the, what, the other idea was the, um, the Trophy Mage, but I just don't see it. I don't see the room. We'll just roll with three. It's legendary anyway. Thelona's on it. Oketra does a lot of nothing in this deck, and in magic in general. <laughs> Oketra's a a heck of a, a heck of a sad card. It has its moments. Don't get me wrong, but not in here. Edmund's putting bets down on 9-2. Uh, we're sitting at 5-0. and oh. So this deck had, has not taken a loss. And that's a great position to be in. But that doesn't mean you can't just wake up, get mana screwed twice, and it's over. For those of you curious, the top record right now in quest for the best is 10 and 0 black grind black zombies 10 and 0 mono black zombies uh right behind it 9 and 0 jeskai control 9 and 1 is a drake fling deck 8 and 1 is an unlicensed red deck hands great Super Salty 420 has has a great name. I, I do not deny this. <laughs> You're right. I can't do the Oketra to Walking Ballista for zero combo anymore. You have to know when to let something go. It worked once and it was beautiful, but it doesn't ever have to happen again. Some things were just meant to happen once. I, I'm actually pretty stoked about Glorybound Initiate being back in here, because when I was looking at the deck, what I really want is I want early presence, and I want good cards that get their cost reduced by Monument, but that also help me bridge to the late game. Glorybound gains you, gaining life can do that. All right, we got a wolf in the house. Nice. I mean, is that a Reflector Mage target? I think it is. Why not? But let's see if 
Let's see if exerting gets him first. I definitely do want to exert. I want to gain the life basically every time. Even if I already have plenty of life, I want to make sure I get to the late game. Especially if they're going to show me red red cards right off the bat. Uh, we were just putting together the monument, uh, the monument deck, and now we're rolling with it. And I qualified two monument decks. One was called An Angel Monument, but we just combined the good parts of that deck into this deck. So I'm going to unqualify Angel Monument since I. Th it, they just have too many cards in common. They have too many cards in common. And I may do that in a few other spots as we go, because the goal is to find the best deck. I don't need to play around with things that are obviously, like, different. No, the other deck was 5-1, and one, and it was an ugly 5. Uh, so Shard asked if both Monument decks were 5-0. Oh. And the answer is no. The other deck was 5-1. and one. I called it Angel Monument. 5-1, and one, but... Uh, ugly. I can't stress this enough. It was an ugly 5-1. and one. It was not good. It was not good at all. It was a very sad 5-1. So, I don't think that my opponent's deck can beat Gisela. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this turn to play Selfless Spirit and Hanwar Militia Captain so that next turn I can play Gisela with protection from the Spirit if the Spirit lives. And I, if the Spirit doesn't live then hopefully that's another removal spell out of their hand, making Gisela more likely to be okay. And we're playing the captain since we've got the mana. Not going to block that wolf, though. It's not part of the plan. Are we up against some kind of a werewolf deck? Wolf tribal? They had the red wolf. That uh, got returned by Reflector Mage, so the red wolf's in my opponent's hand. Oh, we're trying to look up the card. So this is Kessig Prowler. Five mana. It fl it's a it's a two one. It's a Savannah Lions Elite Envoy. It's a Werewolf Horror. Uh, five mana. It turns into a four four that can't be blocked by more than one creature. And what's the name of that thing? I never remember this. Sinuous Predator. Of course, of course. Raw. Do we want to bring the glory? I think we do. Our opponent can't really double block it, or selfless spirit will make it indestructible and we get a two for one, so that's fine. So yeah, let's uh, bring the let's bring the glory. Not with glory bringer, but with glory bound. The opponent does go for some kind of double block they really get blown up so it's a 2-1 chump block creating a little bit of resources there they might have a twin boulder shock for end step to force the selfless but let's play let's play the angel And the wolf deck are in a bind against Baneslayer Light over here. And that's, I mean, that's not much. It's not going to do very much on this board. Lipsies. Bell Queller, just, just for the rub-in. Um, I'm not going to attack with this. A pump spell in the first strike. Oh, I will accept that concession, though. I was going to say a pump spell, first strike, something like that. Could mess with it. There we go. Six and O. Oh. And that, uh, Gisela and Glorybound both looked pretty great in that game. What did they replace? They replaced Walking Ballista and Toolcraft Exemplar. And I think that that's strictly, that's strictly better for that situation for sure. 
What are your thoughts on a card like Trophy Mage to get the Monument out more? I was trying to consider fitting a Trophy Mage in, and I did practice with that some, but eventually I ended up cutting it. It's just, uh... It's kind of... It's decent in this build, because you can also get an Aether Sphere Harvester if you already have the Monument, but it's still just... I don't think it's... I don't think it's enough. I mean, maybe it should be in there. We, we're running a Thalia instead. So... Uh, if if you love the trophy mage idea, I would cut one of the three drops, either Aether Sphere Harvester or Thalia, and then I'd run the trophy mage. All right, game seven, blue-white monument, trying to level up. We're trying to get it to 10 wins today. We're on the quest for the best ten, the best one loss record. So as soon as a deck picks up its second loss at any stage, it's done. Hands great. And right now, sitting on six and zero. Oh, we'll set it aside when if we get to 10 wins today or two losses, whichever comes first. But we will try to move the blue-white deck up the ranks. You could put one monument in the deck since it's legendary and replace extra copies with Trophy Mage. Yep, you could try that. The problem with that is if they blow up your monument with a Rex Sage, you done. And there are many times when you want that on turn three. Okay, so interesting conundrum, but... I'm gonna go for the copter here, but I might not play copter next turn. We might curve into the monument. Which would be fine. Uh, people think they have to crew copter and swing and loot ASAP. I think you just put it on the battlefield and make the opponent respect it. And it can wait until a crew shows up. I don't think there's a lot wrong with that. But let's see. Okay, decision time. I. This thing will be a little annoying. You could play the captain. Yeah, I don't like that. Gideon on deck, so Gideon can get pressured pretty well over here by the walker. I'm going to... I hate Rex Sage a lot. I really do. It's tempting just to hold up a Queller. And then what happens? I untap, I play Monument and Captain, or I play Gideon. That's actually rock solid, holding up Queller here. This is, this is, that's, that's got to be the rock solid line. That's the one where I can kind of do anything I want to. Here we go. Now to exert or not to exert. That is the question. Exert. All right, well, I'm not jumping in front then. Which would have been something to consider, although I doubt I would do it. I like exerted, about to face a Gideon. There we go. Yep, feed my spell queller. And now with that creature exerted, there's a chance he can untap it. There's always the chance he can untap it, but I feel just fine deploying Gideon and making a knight. And I can attack with Copter or I can hold back Queller if this thing gets exerted or uh, gets untapped. I think what I'll do is attack with Queller, hold back Copter. Copter can jump up in the air and trade, and I'd definitely take that trade if it meant I get to keep a Gideon. Uh, you can't play Gideon and Captain the next turn, Shard. Uh, Gideon does not get a cost reduction. Otherwise, that sounds like an excellent line. <laughs> Plus, remember, even that would have required three white mana as well, if we could have done it. All right, there's a tireless tracker. Easily one of the best cards around, but 
Here is our declaration in stone and an unsubstantiate. And also, when m I really don't care very much when my opponent is making and cracking clues. If I'm also making a bunch of 1-1s one to block the tracker and getting value. So, what are we doing this turn? I'm... Hmm. We have to remember this exerting thingy is going to come back. And I don't want to leave mana up to deal with it. So, again, I think Copter just has to be ready to jump in front there. Which gets blown out by Combat Trick. Which is annoying. Maybe I'm supposed to leave mana up this turn. Maybe I'm so far ahead that I'm just supposed to make sure that I don't get blown up by some exerting nonsense. That sounds actually very smart. So, not quite showcasing the monument, but monument's in the bag. It's it's kind of the backup plan. It's the backup plan. And we're just going to take a we're going to take a turn and just massacre the board. That's what we're going to do. I know uh, we would also be setting up our captain, but I don't see any need for that either. Let's see, do I want to hmm Yeah, I was thinking of some other lines with playing Monument and holding up on Substantiate to get the Monument into play, but it's not as good. It's just not as good. All right, bringing 10 damage down on you. You're at 8. Now we'll shore the board up. Get rid of you. No Blossoming Defense. Okay. And now he's got a, a Gus Walker that he has to, I don't know, Angelic Destiny or do something like that, and we're ready to mess with that. Uwenwald Mysteries. Cool. That does not bother me one bit. More value. My opponent is welcome to all the value they can handle. Because we're just going to go stompy on them. All right. Gus Walker. What do you want to do? I'm actually not going to defend Gideon here with the unsubstantiate because my opponent can't do enough to kill Gideon. We're just going to bounce the token and win the game. So that's one of the joys of just getting to sit and hold up mana. So that's that's going to be lethal. Our opponent's at 8. So let's make sure they get the gold so they can unlock some more cards. And we move to 7-0. and oh. And that game was... That, I, yeah, that, that game felt pretty good. There was just a lot of good options. And our opponent was playing a green-white kind of human creature deck. It probably wasn't the strongest that deck type could be, but it felt like not much would change if you're just up against a bunch of strong creatures. All right, I'm going to step away for a second. Just got something I gotta go take care of. I'll be back in about five to 10. Please don't go nowhere and we'll pick it up. We're at 7-0, we're trying to get to 10-0. See you in a few.
Let's see. Shard says we could have added the results of the monument decks together. This would be 12-1. Mm, nah. Though if it's really the best deck, the five wins aren't worth one loss. That's true. If it's truly the best deck, it doesn't matter the one loss since it will never pick up a second. And Shard would like to point out that all decks will pick up a loss sooner or later due to variance. Yep. <laughs> word. Variance, the one word to excuse salt. Ah, uh, somebody call up Atma. I need I need some salt in my life. Are Oketra and Bantu Monument only usable options? I mean, Omega, if you consider the Bantu Monument usable, I don't know what to tell you. I think that card is... I, I think that card is particularly bad. Maybe you have a life gain deck. Maybe you broke the format on life gain. I don't... Like, me and that card don't get along. The Hazaret Monument is one I've tried to make work. But... I haven't I haven't made it work. Somebody sent me a message on YouTube saying that they had a deck for Hazaret's monument. So maybe maybe I haven't been able to do it, but maybe some of you can. But hey, all the monuments at least are kind of interesting build around me. Play them. See what you like. See what works. Just cuz I don't make it work doesn't mean you can't. Cuz like I I'll, I'll tell you all secret. I don't I don't try to make everything work. I have decks that just appeal to me and cards and decks that don't. Monuments don't usually appeal to me. I had to be talked into this one. I did not I did not see one. Interesting. No attack from Brawl and mana up. What could it mean? Well, let's see if they let me go to my attack step. Okay. What do you got? Got a trick? Got a pause? Okay. I don't know. Probably a glimmer of genius. Something like that up my opponent's sleeve. Let's see what they have for this harvester. It's a blue-green control? I, I just don't know. Don't know what's up. Zarvalt wants to tell me that black is good in a life drain deck. Combo with the vampire that drains them when you gain. I mean, yeah, you can, like, like for me, if I'm on the other side of that conversation and we're trying to figure out if that's good or how good that is, what I'm going to say is that sounds like you're teaming up two cards to get a drain effect when one card, like Tireless Tracker or Glorybringer, could just completely win the game on its own. While I think that neither of those cards really win the game. I don't think what you're doing quite wins the game. So that would be my argument about that. And I know you told me before that you like to talk about those things, so that's why I'm kind of talking through it. I'm never trying to throw shade on you. I'm just saying what I what I see, what I hear over here as a magic player. So my opponent is playing ramp, and that has become very apparent. It's glimmer Glimmer, veggies, take inventory, so it's kind of big, big combo, maybe fog ramp. So one thing that's good against ramp is Gideon. I don't know if I don't know if it's too late being on the draw as we are and our opponent being able to ramp off that Baral, but we will try. We will try. And do I protect it from a Gaia's Revenge? I don't think so here. I think we just crack in. I don't have a use for energy other than the lifelink, so get to work. We do have a heck of a curve going. <laughs> if we draw, if we draw something to fill in uh, the the turn six into the turn seven, we're. But I mean, blue green. That's either gonna bounce all our stuff, or it's going. Oh, there's black. Hello. So there probably are some kind of sweepers in here. And it's gonna be a Hydra. Well, a Reflector Mage would be really nice right about now. Okay, so this is curious. What do we do about this Hydra? I want to draw a Reflector Mage. Come on. Or Unsubstantiate or Declaration Stone. Nope. Uh, well, we're gonna play Angel. The question is, do we attack into this Hydra at all? And I think we do. I think we just push damage.
And then maybe we Ormondal. Although, I mean, it's kind of crazy that that Hydra can brick wall Ormondal, but that's kind of the way it, that's the way it's going to work eventually. All right, so we just power up everything and go for it. And I'm going to tap you because I'm definitely not blocking with you. And I'm going to power up you. The Gideon Emblem is not worth more damage right now. It would be next turn. But not right now. All right. We're going to throw away a threat. Hopefully. Yeah. Don't have any strong preference over who. Brawl will probably ch jump in front of something. Our opponent will take a punch. And then they'll have to have an answer next turn. Will it be fog? Yeah. Yeah, the fog would be a beating. And I do kind of suspect some amount of fog, although the black must be in the deck for a reason. Yep, there's the chumps. Harvester goes down. C expected that, but here it is. Opponent, languish. Henny's expertise. Those would be nasty. But we can't play around it. We just have to go for it, I think. I think that's the highest probability that we somehow win this game. So we just push, f hope for the best. There could be some really good, like, heavyweight battles in this game. You know what I mean? With uh, the Hydra and Brizella. Alright, so no sweeper, what do you think it means? Should we be going for this? Gideon Emblem now um, is not more damage than Gideon himself, but we get to keep a Gideon Emblem if things went south on this turn. So it's blocks, blocks, take four. So we do have to attack with Gideon. And I think I'll put the Abbey down in case my opponent... If they have a removal spell, this could go south as we don't get enough damage through, but I think we do that anyway because Bruna can get back the Angel of Invention. And then we might also just want to make Ormondal. Yeah, we do have the perfect curve for the Westvale flip, but I don't I don't think that's the right play, and that's why. Commit is brutal. So here's the question. I'm gonna do one, two, three, take him down to two. Do we wanna make Ormondal now that that commit has been cast? I don't think we do. I think that's a bit all in. All right. Plus, an instant speed blocker can protect Gideon. That we can make a token with Westvale Abbey and protect Gideon. Or we could play the Militia Captain. That's the other option. With our opponent at two. Mm. I think I'll stick to the instant speed blocker. Because how high is Gideon? Six. So this plus this can kill it. So he'd have to throw... We want to make sure if he wants to kill Gideon, he has to throw a lot at it. So he'd have to throw this, this, and this at it and have no blockers. So yeah, that's fine. We'll hold back on a Abbey activation. Or he'd have to have instant speed removal. Commit is annoying, but it's okay. 
We don't have anything to get back with Bruni yet. That's a bit annoying. But I, I guarantee something will die on the next attack step. Uh, Merc Lurker. Wow. Clutch. What a card. What a card to throw in. All right. What a card to just toss into the deck at this stage. Holy cow, Merc Lurker, you guys. Back to 11. <laughs> Holy cow. And we're down to one card in hand. The memory is there, too. We gotta watch out for that memory. So we... Actually, that... I mean, we just keep playing stuff out. Whew, that's not good. Hmm... I guess what I want most is a human to go to the graveyard. I think someone's at the door. I need to go check that. I'll be right back. Uh. So, yes, company came over, of course, but we're going to try to get through it. I think he's going to block the caravan on the glory uh, bound initiate, and... I expected that. We can get it back with Bruna, is the plan. Assuming we have time to cast spells. <laughs> this the timer is very low, but we should have time. And this battle rages on. <laughs> No one tried to make a good Kefnet Monument deck. I think that that deck is just doomed because the Kefnet's Monument needs the opponent to play creatures that are tapped to be successful. Nox Hulk. So suddenly our opponent has life gain for days. How frustrating. How frustrating. Well, we gotta get into grind mode. That, that is becoming clear. We gotta grind this one out. Also, it would really be nice to draw like a Reflector Mage and just take that freaking Hydra out of the equation for a minute. Okay, opponent's done attacking. Angel's back. We knew that was coming. So, what do we do here? I think we just try to get really wide. Hmm. Am I supposed to Anthem? All right. Well, you for sure. I'm sure that there's a sweeper of some kind in their deck, so I'm just very nervous about that. But right now, even going super wide doesn't do anything. 
So am I su mm. It's kind of tough, right? Do I make the anthem? Or do I make the emblem? Or do I make the knight? I don't know. I think I think I've got an emblem. I think that's the play. Feels right. Just feels so right. It's the only way I'm going to get an Ormondal that's bigger than that Hydra, right? <laughs> Crack this now before our opponent draws a commit. Captain may be able to overcome the Hydra. True. True. That's what we need. And Jace off the top of Planeswalker. A card advantage Planeswalker at that. Can also bounce his own Gear Hulk, replay his Gear Hulk, but he's not going to do that. I would have definitely considered doing that on the Angel. It also takes out Ormondal. Just obliterates Ormondal. How are we going to get to that guy? All right. <laughs> Guardian of Tazim. Going off. Going off. So one, two, three, four, five blockers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight attackers. We can kill Jace at the expense of our team. If I draw a selfless spirit, that makes it a lot better. Hello. What do you do? Bounce the Hydra. Hydra's easily the biggest problem. Ooh, in response to the lifelink activation? So our opponent's at 13. They block one, two... One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. They take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, thirteen. They take 13. He gives something lifelink. I bounce it in response. Oh my gosh, did I do the math right? One more time. Block, 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 block. Take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so they only take 12, but if they don't block, if they block the angel, instead of the 4, 4, knight token, I win. If they block that way. And I don't think they'll see it. I'm going to go for it. It's a big move. They can play around it by blocking the knight token instead of the angel in of invention, but I don't think that's going to happen. And yeah, we, we're going to exert. Yep, crew with caravan. I remembered that. It, it doesn't plus him a blocker. It's the same amount of blockers. He gets one activation off the lifelink. He's going to target the Hydra. We'll bounce the Hydra. Okay. He just has to block the Angel instead of the 4-4 Knight token. We can also... Uh, we don't have to bounce the Hydra necessarily. He's blocking the token. He's blocking the Angel. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This should do. He's blocking wrong, but he'll he'll change that. No, he didn't change it. Okay, it's fine. Here comes the lifelink. There's the lifelink. Check the rank really quick and see if we're going to give away the gold. We are. We're going to give him the gold. But first, we're going to show him the unsubstantiate. Actually, I'm not going to, just in case I did my math wrong. Just in case I did my math wrong. Usually I would gift the gold, but I am very terrified I did my math wrong. And I want to make sure this works. And it does. Exactly lethal. I would want to make sure I lost that game if I did screw that up somehow. Is, is I guess, what I most want. I want to be punished. I want to absolutely be punished if uh, I did that wrong. <laughs> Holy cow. It was exactly lethal. The opponent blocked a servo with two creatures instead of blocking the Merc Lurker somewhere else. Like, they did have ways to do blocks that made the damage different. 
and the on they only had one set of blocks that they could have done that saved them. But it would have involved not blocking the Angel of Invention, which I thought I thought was too juicy. I thought there was no way my opponent would re resist blocking the Angel, and that's what happened. Sometimes you just gotta go face. Uh, by the way, we did not attack Jace. We did not attack the Planeswalker. This is a mistake I see so much. People think they have to kill the Planeswalker. They have to, but we did not. We killed the face instead. Uh, unsubstantiate, great rip off the top. Obviously the, a top deck, but then we had to use it. 8-0, no. we are sitting on the 8-0 no after a game I thought I was gonna lose. All right, um, I, think I, I think I can keep it based on Copter. The hand will be very bad if Copter dies, so we'll have to be careful with how we use our Copter. And we also have to consider with Evolving Wilds, do I go get white or blue? Because if I get double white, okay, now I have double white, so I can go get blue. Them Knight of the White Orchids, like they, they're kind of blue sources in this deck. That's why we only run 12. They they are blue source 13-14, uh, but they need double white. So sometimes makes the Evolving Wilds awkward. But we don't want to run Meandering River, because then we end up having our Prairie Streams come into play tapped, and our Glacial Fortresses, which happens way more than I feel like it should, just the way this game works. All right, censor me. No censors. Nice. Some Al says Azorius midrange question mark. I'm not sure what that's in response to. Oh, uh, oh, Azorius. I thought I read that as Abzan for no reason. But yeah, this is blue white monument. It is mid rangey for sure. It is a very mid rangey value-y deck. It's a hybridy thing. I read that as Abzan for no reason. Random card thought idea from Zarvolt. What's the mo where is the monument of the unknown god to make any color this creature's cost one less to cast? Ha! Yeah, that would be broke. That'd be just broken. Every time they do something with colorless stuff, it ends up broken. But yeah, it'd be a fun card. I suppose they could make it janky enough that it wouldn't be good. But if it was even like remotely decent, some it would get broken somehow. Our opponent has blessed alliance their own face. Not instead of holding it for the copter. Although, I will tell you right now, if he just held mana up, I would not attack with my copter. Copter's too valuable to this hand, because it's kind of a pile otherwise. And I'm going to discard this Dusk to Dawn. I don't foresee having a use for it anytime soon. And next up, we got a McKinney Patrol. Alrighty, alrighty. Sometimes you go from that epic battle into this, well, I don't know what I'm playing against no more. And you just roll with it. It happens. I don't have any double blue cards, and I don't want to loot away the Westvale Abbey, so I'm going to play the Westvale Abbey. And the Captain. Through the Copter. Send in the rares. And the loot. Hmm. This is kind of a tough one. If we count on Cloud Blazer to bridge the gap to make Bruna happen, then we can get there. So I think the worst card is the second copter. That's a little redundant and unnecessary. Which is funny because we just went from relying on a copter so much and then discarding it, but I don't think that's wrong. I think if we use unsubstantiate to keep the opponent's board down and then play Cloud Blazer as a bridge to get to Bruna and such, Plus our Cloud Blazer game and our board right now might just win the game, but I don't I definitely don't think we can lose a game from this spot. I'm 
the opponent needs a big turn to get back into the game, and unsubstantiate makes that really hard. So, hence keep it. And there's a Spire Patrol. Gonna target, I guess, the Militia Captain. Do I care? Eh, we'll unsubstantiate it anyway. Keep it out of our hair. And that's a reason it, for this deck, at least, that that's a time when unsubstantiate is better than a disperse, as a disperse would not stop the ETB trigger. All right, let's blaze some things. Two reflector mages, sick. Oh, that's that's a pretty sight. That's something we did not have in the last game that I was missing. All right, we got our two lands, but I think I can chuck one and then count on drawing another over the next two turns. If I want to, Bruna. The other thing I might do next turn is discard a Reflector Mage so I have something to Bruna out of the graveyard for the max value, of course. It says that the second Copter always gets discarded. They stand alone. And then he says, well, fly alone. <laughs> they fly alone. They fly alone, birdo, birdo. Oh. Clock be ticking. McKinney Patrol and Company, what have you got? We have the same sleeves, but we have different cards. Well, while we wait for this to run down, let's take a moment to reflect again. And, oh, Omega has a comment. Let's see. I remember from a few years ago, Legend making his own tournament of decks in brackets and determining the best deck. Can that be an option for the decks that qualify for the next round? No, because I don't have anybody to play them against me. Nobody has as much time as I do, nor would I, nor do I, uh, like, nor do I want to get penciled into the exactly when I can stream and when I can't, because business comes and goes and changes a lot. So, nope, not really an option. If uh, they let me play against the AI and the AI did not stink, I would definitely enjoy that. I loved those Legend tournaments, by the way. Shout out to that. Those were really cool. And even now, I would go back and watch those tournaments again if you haven't. They're very fun. All right. So, uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything to overthink despite five open blue mana. Let's just send the critters away. And we'll even discard the third Reflector Mage to Copter so that it comes back from Brazella. But this should be lethal. <laughs> Monument, right on time. I, I don't think we've cast a Monument yet. Could have really used it in the last game, but not... But, uh, yep. I don't think we've cast one today. 9-0! and 9-0. Oh. and oh. I would, uh, it says, uh, magic AI so advanced they could win PTs is what we would need to have that tournament. And, uh, no, I would settle for the, I would settle for the MTG, uh, magic duels AI from 2015. That was close enough. 2014 too. That was also pretty good. I would settle for either one of those. And in 2015, if, I don't know if you watched my throwback video, but I, I showcase it there. In 2015, you could pick your opponent's deck and it could be a deck that you built. You could pick from the AI's decks. Uh, they had their own collection. Or you could pick um, a de from a deck that you built to play against the AI. So we could totally run a tournament in 2015 against the AI if we wanted. 
Um, but of course, the card pool very different, and no planeswalkers was a big problem with that game. Um, but yeah, uh, you could also play against random decks, which was freaking amazing to me. That's that's kind of how I would play all day. I hope that Magic Digital Next has those features and is good. Yeah, I, I hope that as well, Yitz. I hope that as well. I think that, that we all hope. Arrogant Rabbit uh, would like to point out that Duels 2015 had enough bombs without Planeswalkers. Truth! That's true. Oh, man. This is a weird hand because we've got Brizella and Smuggler's Copter. And this hand might just be horrible if Copter doesn't get to attack. So, But um, Selfless and Unsubstantiate should make that possible. If we flood out from here, we just walk into Brizella. If we flood out. Very unlikely when you only have two lands. But here we go. Let's see what happens. This, once again, doesn't look like a monument hand, but hopefully we'll draw one. And off to the races. Our opponent just th throwing their cards on the table with a Thraven Gargoyle. And right off the bat, we get the land, so that's good. Copter, Copter, give me the news. So August 2nd, the earliest we hear anything about the next game. Uh, August 3rd, Investor Day, is when we hear something about the game. And I'm going to warn you, right now, we are gamers. It's not called Gamer Day. It's called Investor Day. It's going to be people with money speak. It's not going to be in gamer speak. So we're probably going to be left with more questions than answers. I'm trying to set your expectations so it doesn't break your heart. This does not get around spatial contortion, which makes me nervous. But I think we still have to go for it. I'm not going to play around Spatial Contortion in the spot. Okay, that's a good draw. I'm going to discard you. Doesn't look like it will be that kind of game. Nope, not trying to sacrifice you. Trying to sacrifice you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sure uh, Arrogant Rabbit says please live stream with scathing commentary. Um, yeah, well, maybe, maybe not live stream. I'll definitely, I'm, I'm sure I'll stream that day and talk about it. <laughs> It'll be like a sentence and a half says Mortivore. Could be. All right, here comes a Cultivator's Caravan. So I feel like we're up against a Metalwork Colossus deck, something of that nature. That makes Unsubstantiate pretty good. I am going to play this Bishop and just push damage in the air, as that's another way to combat that kind of a deck. But I really want to hit my land drops now. And if I don't, I'll discard this Bruna, which... You know, sad to see a dream die, but do what you gotta do. Not a land, so bye-bye, Bruna. Just too unlikely we'll get there. And there's another in the deck. Hey now, hey now, don't dream it's over. And there is a hub. Our opponent's on two artifacts. If they get a third, they gain a life each upkeep and can sack this to go get an artifact. So they're on the doorstep of that. But we've got all the airborne pressure is what we have to hang our hat on and hope that that's pretty good. If they present the um, MMO that the Wizards claims to be working on as Magic Digital next, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna delete my Wizards account out of spite. I'm gonna throw my Xbox out the window. The salt will be real. No, I'll just, I'll just be like, what the hell? All right, Skyship. That is a, that's a thing. So, I'm gonna sack that. 
Save that. Um, Skyship's a problem. Our opponent can crew it. Because they can... Or no. They still need a crew of three. Well, I can hold up the unsub. Or I can reflector mage. Yeah, I think I should just push damage. If I make a... If I play the reflector mage, I get a clue. But, I mean, when am I going to have time to crack it? I think I... Okay, so if my opponent pays one more mana, they can pay six, flip this, crew this. I can respond to the activation with the unsub, and that eats their whole turn. Or they can try to play something else to crew this. We have to assume they have something in their deck to crew it. God, if I Reflector Mage... Man, this is rough. But yeah, I think I've got to go with the mage. And then they'll play something else, crew this, attack. They'll kill one of my two threes. I get to untap. If I draw a land, I have Gisela, and I can attack for five more. And at that point, they're at two. And maybe I can just outrace this thing. God, it's bad. But let's try. Also, maybe we can draw it. And then we can just unsub at the crucial moment. Something like that. But we got to keep moving. Got to whittle that life total. That also takes him off the gaining one life with the fair, which could be relevant. We're in a race, and we are too low on mana. Ugh, I guess I'm not going to have time for you. I just have to discard the expensive stuff, as we, haven't, we just haven't peeled the lands. All right. Opponent has to have a way to kill something or they are just dead now they have a handful of cards but they just haven't done much this game before that skyship so it's possible they just don't have it let's find out they've got one of those cards is the Thraven gargoyle it's stranded by the reflector mage and the card is oh that'll do the job <laughs> that'll do her that'll do but does he attack I think he has to he doesn't get the trigger blocking Sahili Rai what do you do I mean you can copy his boat for a second trigger that's pretty good Copies boat for a second trigger. He can kill both my creatures, but he has to choose the right boat to keep, or that would be a very sad thing. But we got another tough one. He is copying the boat. He has to choose wisely. Choose freaking wisely. chose correctly. Bravo. <laughs> Scared me there. All right. Seven is not six. That is a problem. That is a problem. All right, um, now it's like, is Do I try to hit a land? I don't know if I can win this game if I don't. I kind of suspect I can't. Twenty-one lands in the deck. No evolving wilds, right? One evolving wilds. Twenty lands in the deck. It's a little under fifty percent. 
but I do have to hit one because I need to like go get up to like five or six mana. I need to be able to play a creature and hold up unsubstantiate or I'm going to lose this game. Hit. All right. That's what I had to do. Life total going up. Going to make the race really hard. Draben returns. Uh huh. Uh huh. Still one card in hand. Can't use the prototype just yet. Yep. And we have to wait until it attacks, or it will just crew the caravan. Well, he's probably going to crew the caravan anyway. Yep, here it comes. All right. Bounce you. We have to kill Sahili Rai or our opponent just copies another artifact. And then are we still dead? Possible. <sighs> See, one, two, three, four, five. Well, he can't attack with the prototype, but he can attack with that five, five, and that three, three, and that's lethal. So we need him to screw up is the problem. Need him to screw up. If we're counting on him to screw up anyway, no, nah, he already showed us that he's he, he knows how to use Sahili, so we can't estimate that he'll miss that. Let's see, play to land this turn. So can't hit Brazella or anything next turn. So I guess what I need to hit next turn is Monument to make tokens. And then I can play Gisela and Monument. And that's assuming I get a next turn, but I think I'm dead. We'll see. See if the opponent goofs. Do I have to let Skyship resolve and bounce something else? He tapped the He tapped the caravan. That's what we needed. He tapped the caravan. Okay. It's not quite dead. He tapped the dang caravan. All right. Now we got to get lucky. Cloud Blazer. Two life, two cards. <sighs> Gisela just gets blown the hell up unless I find my last, no wait, that's both unsubstantiates. I have no more unsubstantiates, and I have a selfless spirit. Gisela just gets blown up if I don't find those by that frickin' skyship. So... Not decent enough. I needed better. I love invention. God. Um, all right. Who's going to block? I guess you can take on the treasure keeper. Sky Skysoft comes down. I activate copter. I can't attack, but do I need to attack? Is that the only way I can stay in this game? If that comes down, eliminates that crew correctly. 
then I die. So I have to hang on to Copter. I have to block with Copter. Ugh. Okay. I can't even attack. I'm just... I'm so... so feels like I'm going to die eventually. Really, the only thing I can do here... I think I have to, like, loot Gisela into the graveyard. And I have to draw the other Bruna. I think that's the only way. Oh, Walking Ballista is so bad for me. He even pump faked it. Uh-huh. And he tapped the caravan again. He tapped the caravan again. It's like the biggest thing that's pressuring me. How much is that? That's seven in the air, but my opponent is at ten. Ugh! Come on, attack. Attack. I need you to. Thank you. All right, I've got a block with Copter. I've got to loot Gisela away. I have to draw the other Bruna. That's the line. All right. Draw Bruna. There's one more in the deck. It's a shame I looted it earlier, but I don't think I'd still be alive if I hadn't. Oh, wait. I, I don't have the land. I needed to draw the land or the Bruna right off that Copter loot. Shit. Okay. There's a monument. How many lands does my opponent control? One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Not seven. If I play you, I can play you two. The opponent can hit me in the air for six. If my opponent plays well, they have a ballista. And they can flip this, and they can kill me in the air. The other option is Angel. Make it a 4-3, it just dies. Make two 1-1s, one it dies. It's got to be Monument. God, if, if, if my opponent had one more land, Knight could have... Uh, whatever. Doesn't matter, it's not the way it was. But we should lose on this turn. Um, between Ballista and Skyship getting in in the air. Game's over. Nothing I can do. Just have to hope for more mistakes. This game could have been... I think we played... I think we played well to be here. I don't regret my looting decisions as much as I'd like to have these cards back. Uh, this game would have been incredibly different with um, hitting land drops. That's really all it was. We just... I kept a two lander. We didn't hit land drops. And maybe that's on the two lander. Maybe that's on me. But we were stuck at three for probably three turns too long. Opponent going off. Having their fun. Still gonna, still gonna make him kill us. Because he has proven that he is not that good at it so far. But here we go. This should... Now it's a 7-6 because of the chief. All he has to do is take out the flying blocker. I mean, I'm tapped out, man. You don't have to do all this, but hey, BM springs eternal. Uh-huh. Yep. Got there. Found it. Okay, opponent. Bravo. I would have loved to play that game with... Uh, say, if I, if I hit up to five, like if I hit the next two land drops, I'd love to see what would have happened in that game. But there's our first loss. It happens. Nine and one. We still have to get to ten and one to put this deck to bed for the day. So we got to play one more. What I do like is we would have had no outs in that game whatsoever with the old version of the deck. And with the new version, at least we had the Bruna draw. So still could have come together in the final hour.
Can I, but, but one time today, can I get a monument draw? We haven't had a monument draw yet, like a turn, a kind of a turn three monument going off thing. We had the option in the first game, opted not to do it. Had a better tempo game with Gideon and Spellqueller and Copter, but man, ah, uh, I've, I've, I vent about it every time, but I hate this revenge game against a one rank. It feels so wrong. I just want a rematch or another rank 40. I just want another tough game. I just want redemption. And what I get is a new player with a new collection, most likely. It might not be, but that's usually what it means when you get a one rank without sleeves. I'm sorry, opponent. You do not deserve the beating I intend to put on upon you. It was not meant for you. It was meant for another, but you are the one who showed up. Spell Queller to the battlefield. Double red. Oh, I said Spell Queller. I meant Selfless Spirit, of course. Reflector Mage showing up. And let's get to work. No plays. No plays. Not good. Well, there must be something here. Maybe. Opponent having to think about it. And it will be a pilgrimage. I, I hit pause. I hit pause three times. Ugh, I'm so frustrating. Well, wanted to play it anyway. That's, that's, mm, oh well. So we have a little handicap. So be it. I'll take it. Got a little handicap, and we'll see if that comes back. That's dual sometimes. Since we've got a nifty 2-3 curve, and maybe a 2-3-4-5 curve, see what our opponent can do. It all flies. It can gain indestructible. It'll, if I draw land, it gets pumped. If I don't, it bounce something of yours. It's pretty tough to deal with. Radiant Flames, bring it. Uh, as long as I get to pause, I do not mind, Zarvolt. As long as I get to pause, Selfless Spirit can protect the team. Opponent deep on the tank on what to do on this one. I don't know if you can think your way through it. Either you got the right answers or you don't. An instant speed answer to Selfless Spirit for my turn, and then a Radiant Flames with another colored mana source for his turn. Wolf of Devil's Breach. It's a big mythic wolf, but the problem with big creatures without ETB effects is Reflector Mage. And man, would I love to play Monument and then Reflector Mage, but it's just not the right play. This is the right play. The dreams are being crushed. The Wolf of Devil's Breach shall not pass. There's a concession. I let's give him one more turn to top deck. I don't think there's anything, but let's let's see it. It's our last game with this deck. Let's let's go legit get the win. Let's navigate the fogs. And 
there we go. So, 10 and 1. We managed to level up. Leveled up Blue White Monument. And we RIP'd Red Green Ramp. I think a change I definitely want, though, is another land in this deck. Had a lot of missed land drops that could have really impacted the games they came in. I think the... Mm, I'm, I'm, I want to trim the Thalia. I just didn't do the work. Didn't do what I needed. Or maybe a Harvester, but I really like the Harvesters. But we already have so many flying threats. I don't know. Harvester doesn't really curve into other cards I have. Yeah. I think I discard it every time I saw it. So I think I'll drop off one Harvester. And we'll add, what land can we add? We have all the colored sources that we need. So what land is the right land to throw in? Is there another kind of utility land that fits this bill? Or I guess we can just go down on a evolving, we can cut an evolving wilds. No, I want 16 white sources. I really do, at least. So probably best would just be to add one more planes. None of this really appeals to me. Sanitarium, heck no. <laughs> Guard's bad. <laughs> All right, we'll just go up on the planes, but that's how I want to play it next time for sure. All right, um, leveled up. So two choices. I, I wanted to introduce a new deck and I also want to keep leveling things up. I think we'll introduce a new deck. So I'm gonna go build that really quick. I'm gonna keep the stream rolling, but I'm not gonna talk while I build it so I can concentrate. Hang out, we'll see it. And you'll see something new.